Welcome back to yet another riveting installment of our journey through the real number system. Captain Kirk, like I said in my last video, if you still don't know who Captain Kirk is, Google it. But today we are going to be discussing the rational numbers. So on the right hand side, we can see that we have a full slate of vocabulary. And we will be learning about the rational numbers so I can perform arithmetic operations on the rational numbers. I'll know I've got it when I can successfully implement the order operations with rational numbers. Let's begin. <clears throat> so back in your heyday when you were like uh, four foot one, we lad, you're still four foot one, no worries. I'm like five foot five and everyone calls me short, but great things call, come in small packages. We use the word ratio when we want to compare the sizes of two different quantities. And I know while you might have grown up calling them fractions, I'll definitely refer to them as rational numbers. But a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction in the form of A divided by B, where A and B are both integers. We refer to A as the numerator of the fraction and B as the denominator of the fraction. So real quick, let's uh, jog some memory and let's see if we can connect the previous lesson, which was about the integers, to the rational numbers. Is there a way that the integers are really just rational numbers in disguise? Share your thoughts. Yes or no is not a sufficient enough answer. There should be an explanation that coincides with your uh, perspective and share with the class. As you can see, we have a card sort. Mixed, proper, improper. Categorize the following numbers based on their structure. So if you think four thirds is a proper fraction, make sure you drag it over, connect those two. Unfortunately, it is not because I still have zero of eight cards correct, but I'm sure and confident that you'll be able to get all of eight. All eight. <clears throat> In checkpoint one, I ask you to perform a skill that um, you should have mastered by this point. Right. So right, rewriting 17 sixths, even though it says 17 fifths, that's awkward as a mixed number and write seven and two fifths as an improper fraction. Um, if this is something that you still have not mastered or are unsure of, don't hesitate to ask for us to review this while we're in class together. But that is something I will definitely leave for you as I am confident you should have learned it by this point. Okay. Let's say that you, your roommate, have decided to order pizza and want to split it evenly. The pizza is cut into eight slices. Both you and your roommate each get four slices. You would have then received four out of eight slices or four divided by eight of the pizza. But that isn't one half. So is four eighths the same as one half? Well, in, in the event that you've gotten to this point of your life and you're still kind of like, nope, those aren't the same. Well, I got news for you. They are. And they're known as equivalent fractions. The reason why. Four eighths is the same as one half because we are we are basically taking our uh, numerator, this four, and dividing it. I wish I had the division symbol. Let me see if I can track one down. That's a plus. Wrong way. Dun dun dun. Give me a division symbol. Yes, found one. Perfect. Okay, so going back to my original point is in the numerator and denominator when they have a common factor. In this case, that common factor is four. We can divide both the numerator and denominator by that same value because it's acting like a one. Four divided by four is a one. So I'm not changing the structure of my original number, four divided by eight, okay? I'm simply changing the way it looks. Just like when I decide to shave off the hair on my head, it is still me, however, I am bald, okay? So moving on, that sk skill is critical in a situation like this. Right? And when we are working with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers, which is what we will do for this, for the remainder of, the, of this lesson. But I'd like for you to think, what are the common factors in these numbers? 
might be tedious because maybe math or uh, multiplication doesn't naturally exude from you. However, if you think about it, right, let's say we use 3 and 3. Both of those values work. It will, we would get 6 divided by 8. And they still have a common factor of 2 and 2. So our final value is 3 fourths. Okay. If you were like, oh, divide by 6 in the numerator and denominator. Great job. That is definitely the more efficient way to do it. And I strongly encourage you to use that technique if you know it. But if you cannot identify what the GCF is, no shame in the game. Okay, Start with a small number and work your way upwards. So work your way through simplifying 56 over 64 and then determining the, the question marks in these particular rational numbers. Because we got bigger fish to fry, which is arithmetic and rational numbers. So to multiply rational numbers, we simply multiply corresponding numerators and denominators. And if you forgot your vocab word, however you should have defined it by now, call the fraction b divided by a the reciprocal of a divided by b. So a compound fraction is nothing more than a rational number divided by another rational number. To divide rational numbers, we maintain the structure of the numerator. Okay, so which is a frac which is a rational number. So I'm gonna do a little bit of writing at the same time. All right, so we're gonna maintain this structure here, a divided by b. But we are going to and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. Which is once again another rational number, hence compound fraction. Okay. So in this event, Right, we'll have a divided by b. Oops. Times b divided by c, right, by the reciprocal. And this, since these are being multiplied, we would just be listening to this technique. Right, we're multiplying the corresponding numerators and denominators. So we would have in our final expression place it into the blanks, AD divided by BC. Okay. Remember, we are putting placing those letters next to each other because we are multiplying those numerators after we've rewritten the denominator of the original compound fraction as its reciprocal and multiplied it accordingly with the numerator of the compound fraction. So don't forget to fill in your table here. AC divided by BD. And uh, let's move on. All right. So I'm going to leave most all the multiplication for you because division involves multiplication. And let's at least tackle that. So let's say we want to do 11 halves divided by 4 ninths. Right? We could rewrite that as 11 halves times the reciprocal, which is 9 fourths. And that becomes 99 divided by 8, to which neither of those terms have common factors, and we've evaluated this numerical expression to its final form. And now the gauntlet, addition and subtraction of rational numbers. Addition and subtraction slightly more complex because it requires a common denominator. You can identify the least common denominator for rational numbers by multiplying the corresponding denominators together. In the event that the rational numbers do not possess the same denominator, Rewrite each fraction as an equivalent fraction 
with a denominator equal to the lowest common denominator. Remember, really code word for multiple. All right, part A and B, very straightforward. I'll leave for you. Let's work through something like part B. In part B, we see that we have four ninths minus two fifths. I'm going to detail that here accordingly. Four ninths minus two-fifths. The denominators are not the same, therefore I may not simply add or subtract them. However, if I were to identify the lowest, least common multiple, lowest common multiple, that's it, <laughs> brain fart, that value would be 45. I was able to determine that by simply doing 9 times 5 The lag is next level right now. So what I would need to do is rewrite each fraction as an equivalent fraction. Remember, in mathematics, it's all about equality. So whatever we do to the numerator and or denominator, we must do to its opposite side. So to rewrite... 9 as 45, we needed to multiply 9 by 5. I shall perform that same operation because I am all about equality. And 4 times 5 is a 20. If we apply this same style of reasoning to rewrite 2 fifths, we will see that 5 times 9 is 45. That's a terrible 9. There we go. And 2 times 9 is 18. Now that the denominators are the same, We can simply subtract the numerators and leave the denominator the same. So you'll be tasked with AB and AC. And that brings us to our enhancement opportunities where we will take a pause and pick things back up in the irrational number system. Stay tuned.